So uh, roll call, please, Mrs. Benders. Director Passworth. Here. Director Hope. Here. Director Lang. Here. Director Hathaway. Yes. Director Nichols. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a few special presentations today, and are we going to do any of the athletic achievement awards? No, that whole item is going to be postponed. Okay. So we'll be postponing that as most of our accomplished young athletes are in training camps. So we didn't want to present awards without them here. So we'll post be postponing that. And now we're going to have some of my favorite presentations. And that will be from the Caneo Valley Historical Society followed by the Chumash Indian Museum. So we have Pam Pond and Jana Goldsworthy here from the Historical Society. So you're going to go, okay, then that's just mm -hmm. fine. Uh, Barbara Tejada from the Chumash Museum, are you ready to go first? <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> I think it's all ever be again. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all for this evening and uh, good to see you again. This, I think it was last June that we were last here, something like that when I looked at it. So um, I appreciate uh, we've made it through another year. <laughs> I do have um, a presentation to put up to present kind of what's been what's been going on. It's been a little bit of a different year. Um, Obviously, post pandemic, every year seems to be a different year these days, but um, so there you go, a little. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, this is our, um, our annual report for 2022. Um, I always kind of have to think about how we did it because our fiscal year is January through December, but we have our school year that's a big part of our programming that you know September through June so like how do I put all this together so um I think we've we've uh, met both things here so um just after being closed for almost a year um because of the pandemic we have we fully reopened April 10th 2021 so just just a couple um a couple months before our last uh our last presentation here um, our school in-person field trips, um, which were normally a really big part of our programs, were still kind of limited. We we um, we had teachers still seem like they were um, a little hesitant um, to bring out kids. Um, we were still doing our virtual tours to a certain extent, but I think teachers were kind of tired of that too, the virtual thing. So. Um, so our, our school numbers are definitely down um, and you'll see in subsequent um, uh, 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 slides um, from previous years. Um, but interestingly, our general visitor attendance that comes out on the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, um, was the largest that since we've been tracking, um, I think we started really tracking everything in like 20 Seven, 2016, 2017. So, um, so there was definitely when we after we reopened, we saw that the pe people were just like really excited about getting out again <laughs> and coming out and visiting. Um, so that was that was a good news. Um, the lingering effects of the pandemic, we we have seen a lot of increased stress and burnout um, of our staff and volunteers. We lost some volunteers. We lost some staff. Um, we lost some board members as, as people, their interests have changed, things have come up in their lives. Um, so, you know, but but that's kind of what the situation is in museums kind of across the state, across the country, and some of the um, the publications and, and um, descriptions that I've been, been seeing in general. Um, I, I'm a member of the Central Coast Museum Directors Group that's primarily started with Santa Barbara-based um, museums, but they decided to, to, you know, open it up to us, Ventura, and I don't even think there are any San Luis Obispo County people on there, but they're supposed to be allowed, but it, it's, everyone's kind of dealing with the same types of things. So let me just, um, I'll go into our public hours on the weekend. So we're fully reopened Saturdays, 10 to 4, Sundays, noon to 4. Saturdays used to be our big day. Um, we're finding that's really shifted 
that now Sundays tends to be our big day, probably because everyone else has other events going and things in, you know, athletics <laughs> going on, on on Saturdays. Um, so in 2021, the calendar year, our attendance was a little over 2,600 visitors, um, which is a lot for us, only being open a couple of days a year. And it's the largest since we've been tracking in, in 2017, even pre-pandemic. Um, and just based on our numbers so far for this year, we're on track to meet or and exceed those numbers, which is which is great. We did um, we did increase our um, admissions fees this year um, by additional two dollars, so it's seven dollars adults, um, five dollars seniors or kids. Um, we'd had five and three for years and years and years, and just with the cost of everything going up, um, you know, I know that kind of helps doesn't help with inflation, but we had to go up too. So. Um, so, but that's been a big help because we've had such um, much greater attendance as well. So as I mentioned, our school tours, the numbers are a lot lower than they have been in the past. So we had 541 students through virtual programs, 1,288 students in in-person, and normally we have, you know, five, 6,000 kids in a year that come through. So the, the, the numbers were definitely down this year. Um, we unfortunately had two of our educators um, leave for other opportunities, um, full-time position, another one went to a um, college teaching position. Um, so we were kind of, um, we've been down to two, two education staff We're actually looking to um, hire our uh, education specialists, refill our education specialist who coordinates the whole education program. We're doing interviews next week. Um, and, um, and just in general, our volunteer interests, we, we tend to get a lot of student volunteers um, and of course, you know, they kind of come and go as their student, you know, learning programs also, you know, wrap up or finish or, you know, their workload and, you know, at school and so forth, unfortunately. So, um, but we did have a really successful um, event called Homeschool Day um, at this in May 2nd of this year. Um, we had over 200 people <laughs> come in. It exceeded our, our expectations. Um, and we set it up for specifically for homeschool students, and we had several stations, so it was self-guided, so people could come and go at any time during that, that period that we were open, and there were various hands-on. It was a lot of work to set up. It took a lot of, you know, more effort with our staff and volunteers, but it was really successful, and we had people say, when are you going to have the next one? So um, we're hoping to do at least a couple more of these um, this next school year. Um, as we get all staffed up, because that would look, it sounded like that there was a big interest in this specifically. Um, they also get an activity workbook um, that they go through and learn about different things and have hands-on stations on basketry and shell beads, and um, they go on little hikes and that sort of thing. So um, really successful. Um, we've added to our, so during, we started this educational video series um, with help from an NEH grant during the pandemic. Um, that grant money ran out, but we're still, we, we've still been working on these. So we added a few more, um, eight new videos this last year, one on basket weaving, one on flint napping, bead ma making, and we have a little, make a little, couple little promotional pieces that we could use for, you know, recruiting volunteers and just, just general overviews of, of the museum itself. We're up to 352 subscribers <laughs> and over 18,000 views. So, uh, but some of these videos we actually use for our virtual school program. So some of them have lots of views because we send those playlists out to teachers um, ahead of the virtual, um, the little virtual tour. So um, we did a whole bunch of more workshops though this year. Um, we had started the workshops, I think last year, um, kind of small hands-on, you know, more, no more than about 25 people um, could do, make various things um, with some of our native educators. Um, and um, they were really successful. We did several of them this year. We did one of basket weaving, flint napping, um, native trees and treats was really popular um, and um, teas and treats. And uh, we did a seaweed, seaweed rattle making workshop that was also really popular. So we're, we're hoping to do a bunch more of those this next year. Um, we didn't have a lot of events this year just because, you know, up and down with the pandemic, we had um, definitely some suffering from some staffing issues. Um, but we did have an ethnobotany day again this year, which is always popular. We, we did a new event called Wildlife Day because um, 
This last year, we had several sick bobcats and a sick owl um, show up on our property. Um, and they, most of them, oh, I think only one survived, unfortunately, one bobcat survived. Um, they all had mange from rodent poisoning um, from the surrounding communities. So um, we had made all these connections with some of these organizations like the Ojai Raptor Center, and we had um, National Park Service came out. This was a really popular event, and we were talking all about, you know, wildlife in general and not using poison and, and that sort of thing. And so we're going to do this again this year because it was really popular, really informative. And I, and I heard the local neighborhood um, voted to not use rat poisoning anymore, so which is mm -hmm. huge, <laughs> huge news. Um, we also did our, um, every year we do our winter solstice and holiday boutique. So that's always popular. Um, we've kind of got it set now and it's the second Sunday of December, I think is what we are doing. We only did one speaker series lecture, um, virtually via zoom and Facebook, um, this year, just scheduling and, and funding. Cause we do provide honorariums for those folks. Um, so we'll probably be looking for another small grant to support that, to do that again. Uh-oh. <laughs> oops. I think, oops. All right, why is it wanna, there we go, okay. <laughs> um, we didn't, we usually do a few outreach events um, each year. We had a couple different ones scheduled. I was actually going to be doing one with the um, Pleasant Valley Recreation Park District. Don't tell him. Um, <laughs> they were doing something, but I got sick, and we and another employee got sick, not COVID related. Um, so we couldn't do that. But the only outreach we did, we always do the Malibu powwow every year. Um, that's always a really great. Um, we uh, connect with the city of Malibu, and and um, we have like little stations for kids kids activities and coloring and things like that. And they do little pipe cleaner basket weavings um, at that. So that's always a great thing. Um, and most people never know about the museum. So it's a perfect place to advertise our museum at the, at the Chumash, Chumash Days Malibu Pow Wow. Um, we didn't do much in the way of facility improvements other than we had the museum lobby and the gift shop all repainted. Um, there was a lot of like holes in the walls from various things that had been hung up over the years. So we got all that cleaned up. Um, we, uh, we are looking into this year, we met with the Ventura County Regional Energy Alliance folks and are looking at potentially getting um, certified as a green business. So um, they kind of gave us the stuff and the steps that we can start doing towards that. Um, we recently received a Frankenthaler Climate Initiative um, grant, small grant to scope out kind of energy efficiency opportunities at the museum, um, do an energy audit because the, you know, the energy and utilities are always taking a big chunk of our budget. So um, any way that we can do that and also be green about it um, is, a, is a big, um, that's our big goal for the, over this next year. Um, we've also been um, continuing collections acquisitions. So Pierce College was kind of cleaning up their collections um, and they're kind of get, getting away from actually holding archeological collections at the college. There just isn't the staffing to support it. So we um, received all of their Ventura County collections um, and we do get, get donations from private donors. We kind of specialize particularly kind of in Eastern uh, Chumash areas um, collecting uh, for those because there's other museums for other parts of the Chumash area. Um, and we're working with Stagecoach Museum on the Transfer the Lang Ranch um, development collections. If you don't, don't know the Lang Ranch, when they developed the, the community of Lang Ranch, there's a, there were a lot of archaeological sites and they did excavations ahead of the development and it's been stored at Stagecoach for all these years. <laughs> and uh, But it's a big part of why the museum, our museum is there. Um, in mitigation for that development. So um, so we've been working little by little and you know they've been kind of sitting in bags and boxes for a long time. So we're hoping to um, get those transferred and, and to incorporate into our own exhibits so we can actually show, hey, these things were found right here. So, um, and um, we have our, we still have our online collections database that we originally set up through the NEH grant. Um, we haven't added anything to it. We really haven't had the chance or the time to do that. We have 126 objects listed. Um, interestingly, I was able to search the most 
search terms are Chumash music, rock art, and canoe. <laughs> For our, I don't know if we have any canoes pictures in there, but um, so as I mentioned, staffing, we're basically down to two people at the moment, but we're hoping to hire a third very soon. We're down to about a half a dozen volunteers at the moment. Um, so we really want to do uh, our ultimate goal is to hire two more staff um, educator for the educators for the education program, split our visitor services and collections exhibits and actually into two different positions. One person is trying to cover both of them right now. Um, and really what we were working on before the pandemic is to hire an overall director for the whole for the whole thing. I've been kind of standing in and and I'm spread thin. I'm getting tired. So <laughs> we really need someone dedicated to that. So I can't, I haven't been able to do as much as I would like to do because I have another full full time job. So um like running state parks. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So um community relations. Um we have uh, we still are working. We did a recent work day to kind of help with the weeds and the in the yard, so to speak, with the Bank of America Native American Employee Outreach Group. They, they've they been helping us, they help us on events and, and various little projects around. Um, so they're great to work with. We still get interest from scout groups. We have um, a Girl Scout who created a new museum map brochure um, for us because we realized we didn't have any, any maps to hand out to visitors. Um, so now we have one. Um, and we've been talking to some folks um, some Chumash folks uh, about a potential mural project um, at the uh, couple different options for, for a native led mural, essentially getting um, native youth involved in a, a mural project. So we'll see where that goes. Um, financial stability, we've been, it's been difficult. It's still difficult. There was a lot of help during the, the pandemic. Um, that's kind of all finished up, but we're still not back to our regular operating hours. So we're in this kind of weird um, limbo. We've pretty much exhausted all of our cost savings opportunities, except for looking into solar eventually. Um, we're always looking for grant opportunities. One of the things we're, we're kind of the next step is to start looking at general fundraising for operational needs, but grants don't normally fund. Um, so trying to build up our capacity to do just general fundraising. So I'm, I'm all ears if anyone has any suggestions. Um, and just kind of comparison, 2020. Uh, so you can see like half of our income the past couple of years has been through grants, which has been great. Um, it's been fantastic. Um, a gift shop has been, um, it did pretty well this last year. We still have our online shop, but mostly our sales now are in person. Um, but the, the big thing is our school visit. Um, um, percentage like it used to be like a big chunk and now it's really small so we're hoping that'll build up next year as people schools are more comfortable with coming back um and again our expenses it's largely staff and utilities it's usually the two the two big ones and the merchandise for the gift shop um so again uh, what's next rebuild our school education program as we bring on some more staffing we're going to be hopefully growing our events back up again um we're looking for collections management grant opportunities we're actually in september we're hosting a workshop um that's being funded through the um, mellon foundation um, on repatriation and working with native communities on repatriation so um, we're really looking forward to that and making those connections um uh again energy efficiency is, is kind of a big goal of this year um always looking at diversifying inc income streams. And we're we're looking at adding a couple board members this year. And we've also formally kind of designated this Chumash Advisory Committee, people from the Chumash community that don't, don't really have the time to dedicate to like full board members, but the, some people that we can reach out to with questions. We've been kind of doing it, as, um, you know, informally, but we wanted to make a little more formal process that we have about three people that have already agreed to that. And so we're going to be building that out a little more formally this year. So, and thank you. We'd like to really um, acknowledge CRPD board and staff that's been supporting our museum all these years, especially through all these challenging years since the Woolsey fire in 2018, the pandemic up to the present. Um, and uh, thank you very much for all of your support. And here's some photos from some things at the museum's 
past year, we were on KTLA <laughs> and back in November. <laughs> so any questions? Yes, George. A uh, couple, <clears throat> you mentioned wildlife sightings uh, on the property. Now, was that uh, through video, you know, camera type thing, trail cameras or individuals? It, individuals, people, we had um, the, the, we had some sick bobcats, so they weren't doing normal bobcat behavior where they were hiding. They were kind of hanging out close by the museum and we had visitors come in and it's like, hey, there's a bobcat like hanging out out there. And we're like, that's that's really weird. We found um, a wildlife rescue place that we've developed a relationship with. And there's a, um, a gal, her, her name is Bambi. And we're like, oh, this is perfect. So um, so we've developed a great relationship with, with Bambi and her wildlife rescue. I believe they're based out of Simi area, but they, they've been helping out us out a lot. But yeah, it was just visitors noting things. We don't have any wildlife cameras out there, so. Okay. Second, you mentioned you participate in the Malibu powwow. Yes. And um, do you have any method or any way to determine the impact of that? Do you give out a little card or discount to come to the Shumash Indian Museum so you know that that's an effective PR to participate in the Malibu powwow? <laughs> Um, we haven't, I mean, we give out brochures to the museum. We haven't really tracked if they're coming in, but we, we, what we also do is we get people's email addresses to add to our email mailing list for our monthly newsletters um, at those events. And a lot of people sign up and then, you know, we hear and hear from later yet, yeah, like, yeah, we saw you at the Malibu Pow. We found out about this at the Malibu Pow. And then like, they've come to some of our workshops and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, we, we collect emails from people to sign it, add to our mailing list and so forth as well. But that's, that's not a bad idea. So we can kind of track where yeah, people are finding you know, it. I was, I've been thinking about that, like at our front desk, just ask, how did you hear about us? Like we haven't really tracked that so far and it might but, be a good thing to do. Yeah, if you hand out something that says 10% discount or whatever. Yeah. And then you say, oh, we did that at the Malibu powwow. Yeah, like that. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, the Shumash Indian Museum, as some people know, is very near and dear to my heart. I was chair when we took it over yeah. um, a number of years ago, and I was very involved in activities there and bringing groups and, and so forth. Uh, we had many, uh, I don't know, right word, camp out breakfast, and then we'd take a hike, you know, to the cave oh, uh -huh. and things like that. Um, do you have activities you know you've been short staffed so yeah i'm assuming that hasn't taken place but um similar active hiking activities and pointing out like that uh play field i forget the yes yeah we tried um we actually we have uh, guided nature hikes we don't go to the cave anymore because the 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 stairs burned out during the woolsey fire and we haven't been able to find someone that can kind of redo it all um but um but we do have nature guided nature hikes periodically um, for groups and it's part of the school program for sure. Um, and um, we were actually working with someone, we didn't get a lot of interest when it, with, with it, but there is a, um, a Chumash group that is trying to reestablish the traditional shinny game. Um, and we were gonna do like a workshop and demonstrations out on our game field um but that ended up not <laughs> happening um people none of people i think people just didn't understand what it was so um so we're hoping one of the events that we want to have is like a game day um where we kind of highlight all the different types of chumash games and, and use the game field for that sort of demonstration and have an actual real shinny game <laughs> well barbara thank you so much for all the work you put into the chumash uh, indian museum well thank you and um uh, the best of luck in bringing those numbers up and yeah. bringing, busing the kids in. Yep, <laughs> thank you. We, we have applied for a grant through the state museum grant program. Um, we're still waiting to hear it would um, pay for buses, bus transportation, and um, as well as their admissions to kids from title one schools um, from all over. And it, we put in for a fairly substantial grant. So fingers crossed, we still haven't heard yet, but <laughs> I think we're supposed to hear next month, so. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Director Nichols. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you for the presentation. Always good to keep up with the latest activities out there. Uh, you mentioned a lot about staffing. I just was wondering, what, what would you consider full staffing for the organization? Not, not other bodies, but how many hours per week are these individuals uh, participating? Well, all our staff has been working um, part-time, roughly. Um, but the ultimate would be, you know, a full-time director, um, a full-time education person, a full-time um, collections exhibits person, um, and a full-time kind of visitor services events person, and then, you know, maybe some other part-time. So, so like four, that would be the ultimate, <laughs> four full-time, and then, you know, a couple, two or three part-time educators or front desk people to to support. I mean, I, it's a small museum and we always, I think a lot of people always thought, well, you, you know, you could only have like, you know, really only need one or two staff, but if we really want to develop these programs out, I think that's, that's, that's what we would need. I mean, getting there is another, another story. <laughs> well, I, I can understand with only, like I said, only open weekends, I would say for the public, but if you have school programs right. that are going to be during the week and obviously you can you know, regulate days, but yeah. Someone has to be there to make sure that that happens. That's right. Yeah. And we were doing at, at our height um, school programs five days a week, Monday through Friday. So um, that's why we're only open on the weekends for the public, because normally during the school to, school year, we're we're full of school tours. So. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then yeah. just a, a question. This came up uh, earlier, a different organization, but the there's been a lot of talk about the name Indian being offensive mm -hmm. to some. And I know we just had a discussion on some of our open space trails, whether to include that name, but the organization still retains that name. Mm -hmm. Has that been part of the discussion of the, on the board? Is that something that some find offensive or some don't? I just was curious what, what your org how your organization has positioned itself with that. Yeah, it's, it's been a question that's come up a lot more recently. And um, we were originally the Chumash Interpretive Center, but people, the public was like unclear what interpretive center meant. Um, <laughs> and so it, it, several years ago, it changed to Chumash Indian Museum. And and like, there's a lot of other that's come up, you know, with my my role at state parks, we have the state Indian Museum. Um, and and there there's definitely been discussion about that, but there's, you know, there, it's still a term that's used by native people. I mean, you talk about being an Indian country and American Indian is, is actually still in a lot of the legislat le legislation and so forth. Um, you know, we intersperse Native American, Native Californian, Native, but, um, but we, you know, so it's more for the public kind of understands what, what the place is, but, but there's, you know, up in S S um, Sonoma, there's another place that's called the Indian Museum. A lot of them are called <laughs> They still use the term Indian just because that's, you know, the National Museum of the American Indian. So that's, it's still, it's still used. And, and I think a lot of some of the older tribal elders still use it pretty often. Um, younger generations are leaning more toward Native. Um, so we kind of interchange it. So maybe down the line, we'll, we'll look All at right. changing it. <laughs> Thanks. I was just curious how your organization was dealing with that. But, but thank you for the presentation. Sure. Yeah. Like I said, it's always good to keep up and uh, hopefully things will move forward. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Director Hooker. Barbara, just want to add my thanks for the update. Uh, it's, I think it's been at least a couple of years since we, we got an update on what's going on with the museum. So it's good to hear about that. And I'll admit, I haven't been back there in several years. So I, this will incentivize me to, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> to get, get back there on a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, it's certainly encouraging to hear that your individual visitor numbers are up and hopefully the next school year with things still approaching normal or at least closer to normal <laughs> that you'll be able to, to get more yeah. school groups as well because that's that's where okay. the real traffic comes from. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's been several years, I guess close to four years since the, the Woolsey fire and you lost a lot of mm -hmm. uh, stuff out back there. Uh, you mentioned the, the wood steps to the cave mm -hmm. that, that needs to be replaced. Were you able to ever replace, and I, I'm forgetting the, the term for those uh, structures. The, the, the ops, yeah, yeah, the ops. Yeah, we rebuilt two of them. Um, there, we still have another one um, to build, and but that was based on um, the availability of Thule. 
because we build all ours with the, the traditional tule materials. The problem is now we're in a drought and tule grows around ponds and wet areas. And it's been kind of hard to find tule. <laughs> so um, we actually um, uh, did get some. We worked with uh, apricot farms in Moore Park. They have a little pond. They have um, tule there. And we've worked with the Cayagas Water District. Um, they have tule that grows around kind of their reservoir down in um, Camarillo area. Um, so we did a couple rounds of um, rebuilding and we have the big one still to do. So hopefully this year, and that's where the Bank of America volunteers come in really handy to help with that. So hopefully, hopefully there'll be enough tooling we can find <laughs> to redo the third, the third big one. <laughs> yeah, I remember reading someplace that there was a, a shortage of tule for variety of purposes. Yeah, and I know like um, Satwewa up at the National Park Service, they kind of did theirs and it got blown over in a wind and then they they, I don't think they've rebuilt it yet. <laughs> so, because they had, we were, they were having the same problem. They were, it was kind of like they were asking, well, where are you getting Thule from? Well, I don't want to reveal my source, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said you've got some volunteers from, from Bank of America. Have you approached any of the uh, community service groups about helping out either with the other structure or replacing the, the wooden steps or perhaps? encouraged a you know i don't know what the expense would be but uh eagle, eagle scouts are always looking for projects and, and perhaps mm -hmm. rebuilding those steps might be a, a project for one or several eagle scouts yeah we talked we had eagle scouts repair the fence or the steps before the fire um but the whole rebuilding of new ones i, f I found that eagle, eagle scouts um did really big projects in the past and now they're looking for a little more contained projects. So I think the steps are probably a little too, we were, we were talking with someone at one point and it was because there's a Creek crossing, it was getting weird because we'd have to do a little bridge. And um, so anyway, so it's, it's, it's a big project. So, um, so it hasn't kind of quite come together, but we do do smaller projects with the Eagle Scouts. They've built benches for us and done our, um, gardens and you know planting and things like that and painting or painting and redoing our stage and um, things like that so we have had a lot of success with um, that the steps up there is probably and then we they have helped with the with the ops and, and you know rebuilding and stuff the steps is probably a little bit of bigger issue yeah. so well let's say and it's full of poison some, oak back there now too so. yeah, <laughs> some, some of these community service groups probably have either actively employed or retired yeah. People who might be able to help out with some of these things. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to look into it. Anyway, that. thank you very much for yeah. the update and for the presentation. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Director Holt? Well, I don't have questions, but I've <laughs> listened to everything. So I think it's all been covered, but uh, so have you covered a lot of ground here. Now, I, I, as someone else said, I haven't been there in a few years. <laughs> so, uh, Maybe it's time to go again. <laughs> well, I'll give you a plug. So September 17th, we're doing um, Smithsonian Museum Day, and we're actually using the CRPD um, open house grant. So ah. it'll be open free to the public. Okay, that's um, September and, um, 17th. September 17th. Um, so we'll have an event. It, it's a very broad. So these Smithsonian Museum has a different theme every year, but it was like Experience America, which is kind of a broad. So we're going to say Experience Native America. So okay. that'll be our thing. <laughs> you got it. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, well, I'm not done. I'm going to oh. talk to you again. <laughs> How long have you been the director yet? Uh, I started on the board in late 2015, and I think it was like six months later, somehow I found myself elected as the board chair. <laughs> and then we had kind of a big um, uh, reorganization, I want to say around 2017, and I kind of stepped in as kind of acting director in addition to the board chair, and I, be, I keep looking for opportunities to hire someone to handle that, but, you know, then Woolsey and then pandemic and all that, so yes, yeah, so that's kind of been a uh, been kind of really hands-on since about 2017 or so. Yeah, as, um, as Mr. Friel talked, I can't um, say enough about Barbara. This is, she's doing this as a volunteer. She <laughs> works more than full-time with State Park as an archaeologist, <laughs> and she's over there all the time, running a staff, having to get new staff, 
and has just really made the museum a wonderful place. They've made a lot of progress, and she's just a fun and nice person. So um, <laughs> I'm not over there as much as I could be, but I spent quite a bit of time at Chumash, and it's one of the favorite places for my grandchildren to go. And it's always clean, well organized, and a lovely place to be. So thank you so much for all of your dedication and for continuing your dedication to make this uh, such a wonderful place in Canal Valley. There's not many too much museums, and it's nice that we have one here. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, the next closest one is going to be opening in San Inez, but that's far away. So. That's far away. <laughs> so it's very, very nice that we have something so close here to you know, celebrate the Native people that lived here for like 12,000 years. Yep. So that we're not forgetting that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>